know what? Heck with it all. Just go out there and have fun. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer up Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates where you found this. But tonight, tonight, the main event, the only event, is Steelers versus Browns at 8.15 p.m. at Heinz Field. The Browns were eliminated yesterday. The Steelers might as well have been eliminated. And all that's left is this. Steelers versus Browns on a Monday night. National audience, capacity crowd, and Ben Roethlisberger's final home game in Pittsburgh. You know what, my friends? I think we'll make do with what's at hand. Look, talking about the playoffs is silly. You can go through every scenario that's out there, and one of them, one of them involves the Jaguars beating the Colts, which has a 0.0000% chance of happening. The Jaguars fresh off giving up 50 points to the Patriots yesterday. The Jaguars being one of the most turnover-prone teams in football, going against an opponent that feasts off turnovers, and they've got Jonathan Taylor, and this isn't even worth talking about. The Steelers' season, for all intents and purposes, for playoff purposes anyway, is over. But the fun doesn't have to be. The meaning doesn't have to be gone either. I could argue that when Ben Roethlisberger spoke last week at his most recent media availability that this game is shaping up to be one of the biggest of his career, it remains very much that. Because if we're all being honest with ourselves, this season, the 2021 season of Pittsburgh Steelers football, always was about one Benjamin Todd Roethlisberger. That was always going to be, however it went for him, the ultimate outcome. And that outcome remains very much in play. Let me throw a couple of hypotheticals at you. Ben goes out tonight and soaks in all the adulation from the crowd, and there's a big uh, fiery moment whenever he emerges from the tunnel and the place erupts when they'll announce for the last time your quarterback from Miami of Ohio. And you'll see maybe his teammates will have a little bit of an extra juiced reaction to the scene. And the Steelers come out on their first drive. And this is not without precedent, so don't laugh at it. And go right down the field and score. They actually had a run there a few weeks ago where this became something of a habit. And then it just went away again. But it's possible. It could happen. And if it does, once the ball makes it into the end zone, place just goes nuts. And the Steelers go on to beat Cleveland. And you're watching all the Baker Mayfields and Miles Garretts and all those other assorted, sorted characters moping their way off the field. This is a good thing. This is a good thing. This is not some big downer. And then next week, the Steelers go into Baltimore which, by the way, still has some crazy mathematical equation in which they can get in despite now being 8-8, eight and eight, having lost five in a row, and beat the Ravens. And you have yourself just a wonderful ending for a quarterback who could probably be best defined for his dominance of division rivals to close it out on the road 
against the Steelers' greatest rival. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. Choose when and how you'd prefer to do that studying, whether it's at Point Park's gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus, whether it's online, maybe a flexible hybrid format would work best for you. Find out more about all of this at pointpark.edu. But you know what? I can feel this vibe that you're not sold. You're not into this. Certainly not the way I'm describing it. And that's okay. The expectations in Pittsburgh and across western Pennsylvania for this football team happen to be extraordinarily high on an annual basis. That's just how it goes. That's how the people who run the franchise claim that they prefer it. And I believe them. I really do. You don't become as consistently successful as they have without embracing that type of pressure as opposed to running from it. But this year had only two ways that the script could have been something other than Ben. One was if the offensive line somehow magically survived some of the worst planning in franchise history. That didn't happen. The other is if the defense had been fully healthy and had been able to remain an elite force that produced lots of takeaways and flipped fields and gave this offense and this weak line lots of short fields from which to convert, then you might have had something. Then you might have been talking about playoffs and contention, especially in this muted AFC that we've seen unfold. The Steelers could have been a contender, to borrow the old phrase. But they haven't been. They haven't had one game all season. Not one. They've had some finishes, but not a game that made you say, hey, hang on a second. Maybe there's something here. You never did that once, did you? Not even after the most uplifting, dramatic, whatever, you never said to yourself, oh, yeah, this is turning into something. Because it wasn't going to. Because you can't win without an offensive line. And you can't win with a one-man defensive line. And you definitely can't win if that entire front seven can't stop the run. There's nowhere to go. Can't run, can't stop the run, can't win. So it it's down to this. It's down to what should have been the default all along. And that's Ben. There's a chance to see the player I believe is the greatest quarterback in franchise history, one of the best football players the city's ever known, certainly the most important player that this franchise has had this century. And I say that with respect to Troy Polamalu playing a different position, a very different position that doesn't have anywhere near the impact on the game that the quarterback does. And to see it finished with a little bit of a flourish, nothing would make for a better signature for this particular player's career than to finish strong, to come back. When we come back, just one question. time for just one question and that's brought to you always on this program by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly and George. They represent people who are hurt in car accidents who need help with workers comp or medical malpractice claims. 
The attorneys at LGKG pride themselves in doing what they say they're going to do. It's important to them that when they make you a promise, that they keep that promise. And this law firm has been keeping promises in our region for over 80 years. LGKG has offices in Cranberry, Newcastle, Beaver Falls, Butler, and Elwood City. Learn more about them at lgkg.com. And today's J1Q comes from Lori Coleman, and she asks, with all the speculation about whatever impact Devontae's perfect had on Antonio Brown, I'm just wondering if journalists covering the Steelers at the time noticed if AB was obviously different after that. Regardless, I'm genuinely saddened to see him struggling, and I hope he's able to get help. Lori, <sighs> Please take this from someone who knows and understands mental illness, at least to a layman's extent. And know that you are a much, much nicer person than the one you're wishing well. I am as empathetic as anyone anywhere when it comes to mental illness when it comes to brain injury, when you're talking about CTE, when you're talking about what might have happened to AB with Perfect's vicious cheap shot that got him in the front of the helmet that night in Cincinnati. But I'm here to tell you, um, the stories that I could share, I couldn't share on a family program like this. This is not someone who is a savory character by default. I gave him every opportunity for a while there, and I'm talking about in his earlier years with the Steelers, I actually felt like we had a little bit of a rapport. And then that's where my story will go the same path as that of everyone else you'll ask, including people who love the guy. And that's that he changed. And it wasn't sudden. It wasn't something where you said, whoa, before the perfect hit, he was this way. And then after that, he was that way. I yet to encounter anyone who'd corroborate such a theory. It was gradual. And it was a gradual descent into some form of egomania, drama, exactly what everyone saw yesterday in East Rutherford. There's no one in Pittsburgh who ever experienced A.B. who watched one millisecond of that footage and said, my goodness, I'm shocked. Because he did stuff like this all the time in Pittsburgh. And much, much worse. If we want to talk about who A.B. is and what he became and everything else, I'm going to be blunt here. If we condense that to just football and we leave out all of these other incidents that were reported that involved the police, that involved, you know, authorities doing actual documentation of events that occurred in his life that he caused, that's, you know, that's who he is. That's who he is. I heard some of the worst stuff I've ever heard from anyone's mouth come out of his mouth. I had some of the most bizarre behavior happen right in front of me. And when I say right in front of me, I'm talking about two or three inches in front of me. Involving this individual. And I'm sorry, I'm not inclined to say, gee, wow, what an unfortunate thing that he was hit in the head by perfect. Perfect hit lots of people in the head. Lots of people have been hit in the head. And it's a very real impact on their lives. For the third time, I am not diminishing that. 
but they don't turn into jerks. They don't turn into scumbags. They don't turn into people who assault women. They don't turn into people who throw their furniture off an upper story balcony without any regard to who might be below. That's, that's just a lousy person. That's a lousy person. Do I hope he gets better? Sure. I'd love for everybody to get better. But that doesn't mean he's starting from a good point. One of the best days the Pittsburgh Steelers franchise has ever known is the day he walked out that door for the last time. And now three other teams know why as well. I appreciate the question, Lori. I really do. I hope you take my response in the spirit in which it's intended. I will not be thinking about A.B. tonight. I can tell everyone that with confidence. I am looking forward to this event, not just as a football game, but as an event. We in the city of Pittsburgh are really, really, really good with events. We show up for strange things called Picklesburg. We're like that. This is going to be a big, big deal for a lot of people around here. And I think it's going to be fun, too. I'm looking forward 